Morning, everybody. It is 10.02 on Monday, the 27th of September, 2021, and had a little uh, technical difficulties here this morning. <clears throat> In fact, I'm trying to live stream just through Facebook. Usually I use this other device, OBS. It's a, a streaming software thing, but it was giving me trouble today. The reason we stopped using Facebook Live is because my audio and video weren't in sync. Uh, it was like an old Kung Fu movie where my mouth was moving, but different words were coming out, right? So anyways, we're going to give this a shot and uh, we'll see what happens. Doesn't matter. We're here and we're going to get the audio out. That's what's most important. It's not seeing this face here. Lord help us, right? Verse uh, one of chapter 22 in Job. I'll tell you at this point, Today we're beginning the third round of debate between Eliphaz, Bildad, Zophar, and Job. These three men keep attacking Job. Job keeps defending himself. Honestly, I'm bored. I'm tired of this arguing back and forth. I, I don't know, maybe it's my Monday morning mood, but I'm really sick of these guys. <laughs> and so... I'm going to really probably throw off on Eliphaz. I don't know how much logic or thoughts put into it, but some emotion certainly is. I'm tired of these guys, and maybe I'll vent about it a little. Who knows? We'll see. Let's pray. Lord, help us, please, as we go through the chapter. And in all seriousness, we want to learn from it what you have for us. Give us wisdom, please, as we interpret the scripture this morning. Give us the mind of Christ. Please use your spirit to guide us into all truth. In Christ's name we ask, amen. Then Eliphaz the Temanite answered and said, Can a man be profitable unto God, as he that is wise may be profitable unto himself? Is it any pleasure to the Almighty that thou art righteous, or is it gain to him that thou makest thy ways perfect? Will he reprove thee for fear of thee? Will he enter with thee into judgment. So these first four verses, Eliphaz is is proposing these rhetorical questions. You know, are you really that big of a deal to God? Are are is what you do on this planet does it really matter to God? Are you profitable unto God? I mean, you're very profitable unto yourself. He throws that jab out there, but are you really profitable to God? And uh, he's going to spend the rest of the chapter now telling Job just how wicked he is, how wrong he is theologically, his understanding of how things work with God. Verse number five, is not thy wickedness great and thine iniquities infinite? That's, <laughs> he, that's uh, taking the gloves off, putting the brass knuckles on and hitting him in the jaw, isn't it? For thou hast taken a pledge from thy brother for naught, and stripped the naked of their clothing. Thou hast not given water to the weary to drink, and thou hast holden, withholden bread from the hungry. But as for the mighty man, he hath the earth, and the honorable man dwelt in it. Thou hast sent widows away empty, and the arms of the fatherless have been broken." Therefore snares are round about thee, and sudden fear troubleth thee. So he's telling Job that God is judging him for his wickedness. And we always see in the Bible, verse 9, you've sent widows away empty, arms of the fatherless have been broken. Fatherless are the, the orphans, those without a, a parent or a male parent in their life at least, and the widows. So we see widows and orphans all the time. James chapter 1 talks about True religion, pure religion, is to make sure that the widows and the orphans are taken care of. So, uh, he's saying, you didn't do any of that. Verse number 11, or darkness that thou canst not see, and abundance of waters cover thee. Is not God in the height of heaven, and behold the height of the stars, how high they are? And thou sayest, how doth God know? Can he judge through the dark cloud? Thick clouds are a covering to him that he seeth not, and he walketh in the circuit of heaven. Hast thou marked the old way which wicked men have trodden, which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with a flood, which said unto God, Depart from us, and what can the Almighty do for them? Yet he filled their houses with good things, 
but the counsel of the wicked is far from me. The righteous see it and are glad, and the innocent laugh them to scorn. Whereas our substance is not cut down, but the remnant of them the fire consumeth. And so we'll take a break here. <clears throat> He's saying you can judge a man's faithfulness to God on the basis of his prosperity. If you're prosperous and you're doing well, then God is pleased with you. And if you're not prosperous and you're broke, God is not pleased with you. None of that's true. That's even a prosperity gospel teaching. Uh, we see people teaching that today. Uh, remember Jim Baker uh, in the PTL Club, he taught this. Joel Osteen teaches this. Joyce Myers had taught this. And of course, she's even recanted from it and said she was doing wrong. But uh, this whole idea that if, if you're godly, God will bless and prosper you. And if you're wicked, he will not. That's not Bible teaching. Nowhere in the Bible do you find such a thing. And uh, But this is what Eliphaz is telling Job. If you were more righteous and you were more godly, then you would be more prosperous than you are. Verse number 21. He's advising Job at this point. Here's how to fix this problem. Acquaint now thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby good shall come unto thee. So if you'll get right with God, you'll have peace return to your life and prosperity will return to your life. Receive, I pray thee, the law from his mouth and lay up his words in thine heart. So obey God, learn the law and, and do what it says. If thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Thou shalt put away iniquity far from thy tabernacles. Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust and the gold of Ophir as the stones of the brook. So if you'll get right with God, your money will come back to you. You'll be prosperous again. Yea, the Almighty shall be thy defense and thou shalt have plenty of silver. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Stay right with God and you'll get rich. For then shalt thou have thy delight in the Almighty and shall lift up thy face unto God. Thou shalt make thy prayer unto him and he shall hear thee and thou shalt pay thy vows. Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thy ways. When men are cast down, then thou shalt say, there is lifting up and he shall save the humble person. He shall deliver the island of the innocent, and, it's, and it is delivered by the pureness of thine hands. And so what's chapter number 22? It's Eliphaz telling Job, we know that you've done wickedly and that your iniquity is, what did he say, without end, without uh, eternal, I don't know what he said, but uh, he said, you know, there's no end to your iniquities and your sins, and that's why you've lost all your money. That's why you've lost your livestock and your business and you're broke. If you get right with God and you draw near to God, then your money will return to you. That is not Bible teaching. That is Eliphaz's opinion of how God works, and it's not correct. There are many, many, many wealthy people who are evil, wicked, ungodly people. And there are many, many, many broke people who are sincere and love God and close to him and right with God. Likewise, there are many evil people who are broke and there are many godly people who have immense wealth. And so wealth or the lack thereof has no bearing on godliness. But that's what Eliphaz is trying to tell Job. They're using everything they can. And, and let me just rant for 30 seconds here. I'm tired of all this arguing. If I were Job, I'd just send these knuckleheads away. What is the point of this conversation? Why are we doing this? Just leave me alone. I'm, here I am. I'm sick. I'm ready to die. Get out of my life. I don't want you here. That's what I'd be telling these guys. Nothing profitable is coming from this debate whatsoever. The only thing profitable coming from it is that we learn from it that <clears throat> these uh, these arguments are incorrect and wrong. So we benefit, but I'll tell you, I don't. Life's too short for me to sit around and argue with people that have no idea what they're talking about. 
I'm just going to move on, to be quite honest with you. All right, that's it for chapter number 22. Job's going to respond tomorrow in 23. Then we're going to hear from uh, Bildad again, and Job will respond, and then Zophar and Job will respond. And that'll be the end of the debates with these guys, I'm pretty sure. And then we shift gears and God shows up. And that's going to be better. That's going to be different. I'm just wore out of this back and forth day after day here. What have we done? Let's see. Job, Eliphaz, Job, Bildad, Job, Zophar, Job. So seven interactions uh, on the first end, and then six thereafter. So 13, 19 chapters are these guys going back and forth. I'm just tired of it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to leave you alone with that. Have a wonderful Monday. Have a fantastic week. If you're local, come to church Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We're having pizza and prayer, making a big announcement uh, for the history of our church, or the future, I should say, of our church. Got a lot of exciting things planned. I hope that you'll be there. Uh, it's a big deal. It's not, it's not some small thing. But come if you can, and uh, go have a wonderful week this week. Uh, you know, love God. Stay faithful to the, the devotions here. Walk with God every day. Spend some time in prayer. Talk to God about at least one thing in your life today, and uh, you'll start working on that prayer life. All right, I'm going to leave you alone with that 11 minutes. God bless you. Have a great day. Oh, please like, love, and share the post.